have a goal to see that every Bahraini has a home, have a job, and we will not have poverty. Bahrain has made significant progress towards reaching the Millennium Development Goals through effective policies to address social, economic, and environmental challenges in, so, in a sustainable manner. Your Highness, Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the 2006 Special Citation of the UN Habitat Scroll of Honor. I extend my warmest congratulations to you and the people of Bahrain. Welcome, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests to the Bahrain Visions Forum 2020, focusing on sustainable goals beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. I congratulate the court of His Highness, His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, and the World Health Organization for organizing this timely forum. We are fortunate to have with us today a number of distinguished speakers who will address the theme of the forum. We start this forum with a strong message from the youth of Bahrain, entitled, Young Voices from Bahrain for a Sustainable Future. Hi, my name is Hassa. There is no time to waste. Now is the time to review access to basic human needs, including water, food, health, care, and schooling. It is our future that is up for discussion, so we have the right to ask, are the sustainable development goals still relevant, or can they be modified to meet the objectives of the 17 goals on 169 targets? Hi, my name is Abdul Hamid. I'm eight years old. During lockdown, many people have seen things they didn't see in the past because they finally opened their eyes and finally saw what life is like. They saw their families, they did a lot of things just because of lockdown. There now follows a message on behalf of His Royal Highness, Prince Khalifa, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain. I would like to call upon His Excellency, Dr. Abdul Latif, bin Rashid al Ziani, Minister of Foreign Affairs. At the outset, I have the pleasure to convey to you the greetings of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness has given me the honor of reading his message to the Bahrain Visions Forum 2020 to counter the impact of COVID-19 under and or any other pandemic. We therefore call for the establishment of an informal group of member states that could champion political action at the multilateral level. Principally, such a group could act as friends of the Secretary General on the amelioration of the negative impact of COVID-19 on, on SDGs ensuring the health and safety of societies and peoples needs to remain a high priority in the current era. It requires strengthening investment in health sectors, a matter that the United Nations and the World Health Organization are exerting tangible efforts to achieve through their actions and strategic plans for the post-coronavirus phase. Next, we invite the Director General of the World Health Organization, His Excellency Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, who joins us live from Geneva. Thank you for bringing the UN community together every year and for your commitment to multilateralism. And Your Royal Highness, we support your proposal to create a Friends of the Secretary General on the amelioration of the negative impact of COVID-19 on the SDGs, which you have just announced. And we will do everything to support you. Now we present a message from His Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, who is Secretary General of the United Nations. The virus is a major setback to our common efforts. Poverty is rising for the first time in 30 years. The world has lost the equivalent of 500 million jobs. The United Nations continues to push for a massive rescue package for the world's most vulnerable people and countries, 
a vaccine that is affordable and available to all, and a global ceasefire to focus on our common enemy, the virus. We must also address the inequalities and fragilities exposed by the pandemic. Recovered is an opportunity to reimagine the future, a future rooted in peace, sustainable development and human rights. We can only get there together. We're now going to be joined live by Dr. Dennis Mukwege, who is the Nobel Peace Laureate from 2018. The COVID pandemic uh, has almost inexorably upset our certainties and our mode of operation, reasoning, and life in several sectors. This pandemic br brutally snatched from our affection hundreds of thousands of lives of loved ones. We now welcome His Excellency Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who is Under Secretary for the International Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And he's also uh, Chairman of the Board of the Directors of the Bahrain Center for Strategic International Energy Studies. I would like to thank the Court of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, for inviting me to speak before this forum. And my presentation today would be twofold. First, I'll speak about the partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations. And secondly, I'll speak about some of the highlights of the partnership between Bahrain and the United Nations, and particularly the United Nations Development Program on the socio-economic impact of COVID-19. First, it's important to highlight that the relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations has started even before Bahrain becoming a member of the United Nations. We have seen considerable development since the signing of the SPF. We have seen that there has been an increase in technical projects, both proposed and implemented by 69%. We have seen an increase in UN visits to Bahrain by 78%. We have seen an increase in joint meetings and events with UN agencies by 62%. We now move on to statements made by eminent contributors to the forum, beginning with a video statement by Her Excellency Ms. Audrey Azoulay, who's the Director General of UNESCO. The current crisis is a stark reminder of how interdependent we are. It shows us that no man is an island, in the words of the British poet John Donne. To address the consequences of the pandemic and rise to the other challenges of today and tomorrow, we need to use all of the resources at humanity's disposal. We need more cooperation, and the citizens of the world trust the United Nations for that. Next, I would like to introduce His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Shahid, who is the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Maldives since 2018, and who has played a key role in the Maldives' transition to democracy. Excellencies, 2020 has been a, has been a devastating year, and what makes it unique is that these difficulties have spared no corner of the world. What lies before us is not just an unprecedented health crisis posed by COVID-19. This health crisis has developed into an economic and social crisis, the impacts of which will linger for years to come. Excellencies, we are under no illusion. The difficulty in achieving 2030 agenda has been made more challenging due to COVID-19. As a small island state, we are vulnerable vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, vulnerable to external shocks, vulnerable to rising commodity prices, and vulnerable to the decline in tourism. Uh, I would like to now welcome Her Excellency Professor Anna Tibajuka. The Bahrain Religious Forum started uh, uh, two years ago. This is the same session. And now focusing on the existential uh, problem of the time, COVID-19, and its impact on the implementation of the SDGs. I would like, the main thing that I would like to point out is that this is really a problem that has brought together humankind. In recorded history, 
at least of our times. I'm not aware of a problem that was able to galvanize the whole world to bring humanity together as we face this challenge in our respective countries. I'd like to now uh, invite Her Excellency Ms. Faika bin Saeed Al Saleh, who is the Ministry of Health of the Kingdom of Bahrain, who will talk about the Kingdom's efforts in overcoming the challenges of the current pandemic. It is without a doubt a new world that we are living in after this pandemic, as this virus has forced all countries all over the world to recognize many barriers in their various systems, whether health, educational, economic, etc. In order to prepare for and respond to COVID-19 and limit the post-pandemic repercussions. Next, we have a message from Dr. Mahmoud Moyeldin, who is the UN Special Representative on Financing SDGs. I'm extremely honored and delighted to be invited by the Bahrain Visions Forum to um, share with you some reflections on the uh, matters affecting the Sustainable Development Goals and financing uh, development in this uh, challenging time. Our next contributor needs no introduction. The former Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, and current President of the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens, shares with us a poignant message. It is our common responsibility to ensure that we are leaving no one behind as we are maneuvering through the challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic poses. Let us all take action together to achieve the SDGs in the next 10 years. I'd like to open the floor now to questions since we have a number of participants with pressing queries for our panelists. Uh, the question is, climate change has tangible effects, including adverse health impacts. Bahrain being an island, but not an SID, how is the esteemed government working with the UN system to combat climate change? Small states are more vulnerable to climate change than other countries, and hence there should be more attention given to small states because of climate change, because of the rising sea levels because of the importance of collective approach towards addressing these challenges. Throughout the community of small states within the United Nations, uh, Bahrain sometimes may be left out, as was mentioned, because Bahrain is the only island in the region. The closest small island to us is, uh, is the, are the Maldives and then Sri Lanka. But you know, the global agenda is all about leaving no one behind. But with islands, it's very important to leave no island behind. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Uh, can I call upon uh, Mr. Stefano uh, Pettinato, the UN Development Programs resident representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain, uh, to say a few words as well. But I want to just stop only, and I, I will finish, on the issue of education and the role of education, not only how the educational systems are impacted, but also the role that the education systems have towards our future. How children have to be taught early on about the Sustainable Development Goals, for instance. How children have to, and have a voice to say and to bring to the table in terms of their concerns and their views, because they're the, they're the leaders of the future. We have uh, Mr. Babafimi, who is waiting online now to answer a question. The pandemic is raising questions about multi multilateralism, which is the foundation of the United Nations. WHO has succeeded in scientific coordination in trying to tackle the pandemic. Offer thanks again to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his initiative in calling for the establishment of a group of member states to support the Secretary General's efforts on the minimization of the negative impact of COVID-19 on SDGs. In other words, solidarity and joint action. We're taking the hand of the weak is the norm to ensure that nobody is left behind. Dr. Tedros had basically four 
uh, issues that I summarised from his speech. One was that we need greater investment and leadership for health, uh, for the health uh, sector uh, generally. We need to strengthen the subnational primary health care, public health services and uh, outbreak responses. We need to build back better and greener, a manifesto for a healthy and green recovery. And we also need very much to support the poor, the lower income countries and individuals who are unable to fight the pandemic as the rich nations are. Today we learned from the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, that there's one million deaths have been confirmed due to COVID-19 and 33 million people worldwide have been infected. Now these are just the figures we know about. There could be many more. It's an urgent requirement that we take the lessons learned in this seminar, webinar today and implement them. Thank you so much, one more, for your participation and involvement in this important forum. Thank you.